Hello everyone and welcome to the Immortal Gates of Pyre October 2v2 show match. I'm your host Dominic or Shadow Fear, whichever you prefer, and we are going to have a match between Wajetzo and Mr. Kareem against the Walter team, made up of Santa Claus and Magical. Now we will have a best of five starting on Lost Province as these two players as these two teams were the only teams that signed up for the weekly this week. Hence the show match. That's how it works. If you want to have the tournaments, not show matches, you can join the Discord. I've linked in the chat, the Immortal Discord, because that is... We, we are... I mean, okay, granted, there have been some technical problems, which have made it a little harder for people to get in on this, but for the most part, it's just... We need signups. There's only two teams that signed up. So, yeah. Bit of a slow week this week, it seems. Oh. As well as some confusion about exactly what's going to happen, but whatever. We are getting into it. Starting off on Lost Province, as we generally do, that is, of course, the most popular map pretty much across the board. And it looks like we're going to be getting a full full set of Immortals today. With the Underdog team, the... Oh, they just walked positions. Underdog team watches though and Mr. Kareem going for the Karath Immortals, which... Not surprising, as mentioned last week. Or is definitely one of the easier Immortals to play as a new player. And, yeah, you know, there's why is Mr. Cream is still fairly new. Of course, the question is not so much who you're playing, but how you play them. Keep a very close eye on what... Why does the Mr. Cream do right off of the bat? Why is this milk going out here? Why is it What are you up to? No, at the same time, the Walter team is going for early attack, early expansion. A fairly conservative start by the Walter team. Which, you know, considering Santa's both Santa and Magical are on that team, that is saying something. But they know they, they, they'll win the long game. Hence, why is going forward with the forward Legion Hall, spotted by Magical. Which is going to affect their plans some, potentially. I mean, early expansion. Magical, if they go for Earl, like a Alter the Worthy before the next Aether Maw, then that'll be a sign to me that they are a little bit concerned about this. And Santa looks like they are doing in exactly that. Santa making sure that the early up, the early front. The early proxies in Tar from Wajazo are not going to become a particular problem, being that the Walter team are both playing Aru. They're going to be relying quite a bit more on micro kiting, a lot more on just on unit control skill than on unit power, since, well, quite frankly, Aru doesn't have a lot of individual unit power. The Walter team, however, being much stronger players when it comes to micro, both Magical and Santa are amazing micro players. This should not be an issue for them. Really just going to get them down to how quickly they can get their defenses going. So far, it would appear that Sand and Magical are going to be able to just barely stop the Zentari coming up the ramp. They're not going to be able to stop Watches though from doing any kind of attack, however. Like, this is... These rocks are pretty doomed. Mr. Kareem Scout getting dropped. Why just so not stopping? They now they're going for it. Despite the fact that they're going to be completely erect as soon as they get up the hill. Why just so relying on the resolvers that are on the way to hold the line. While at the same time, Mr. Kareem behind this going for the expansion. Mr. Kareem going in more for the late game. And as long as Why so can keep their units alive, keep the position alive. 
Mr. Kareem should be able to manage with the expansion, but that's a big if. Magical Santa both pushing in here. The Absolvers, first one does get jumped on a snipe. Second one able to set up, forcing a small retreat. Santa and Magical not able to break the position at the moment. But they do have the economy advantage. They don't need to break this position. They just need to not be broken by it. They are going to be getting ahead very quickly in this game. So long as they don't lose too many units, Santa and Magical will have no problem getting into the mid game. Of course, that is easier said than done, as both members, both Wajito and Mr. Cream, have set up proxy bases. They are pretty committed to taking this. I mean, map control in their favor is a weakness that Santa Claus and Magical would not want to keep forever. In fact, Magical are going to expand out, or at least looking to expand out of their base. Same time, Ambush Circle coming from Magical and Santa able to snipe a lot of stuff coming in here. Getting rid of both of Watches those Absolvers. Mr. Cream's Absolvers soon follow. This entire time, they are feeding Mala's blood pools. And that food is tasty. Santa Claus on top of the tech as well. The Ikor's coming in to help just clean this up completely. Santa and Magical wiping out everything Wedgezo and Mr. Kareem have sent at them. More reinforcements are on the way, but it's just not enough. Too little, too late. Santa and Magical not quite able to break yet, but it is so close. Magical setting up to go for that final push, just break this mid-ground. I mean, this falls. White Zone and Mr. Cream are done. They need this alive. And Magical and Santa Claus, they're happy to take this up. They just march in here. They got some free units. They don't have to worry about cost. That was that cost was spent and well spent it was. Magical and Santa Claus maintain a position. The Walter team slowly pushing out here. Waiting on the deploy research for the resonance. Once that is up, the absolvers here are done. And it shouldn't take very long for that to come up either. In fact, no time at all. It. This is Santa Claus game. Why does though, Mr. Cream do not have the range to deal with these resonance right now? Trying to push absolvers in, but the counter's already up. Magical, sniping out any Absolvers that move out of place. Watch this own Mr. Cream desperately trying to find some position to come in on. They do manage to deal enough damage to Santa Claus's resonance that Santa Claus cannot hold the line easily. With that, the rebuild is possible. Zoan, Zoan, Golden Tiger, or sorry, Zoan, Mr. Cream will have, from here, enough to be able to go for a big push. They have, they, have, they have won the mid-game now. Like They have won the map control in the mid-game. It's just that that economy game is still Santa and Magical's game. Like, Santa and Magical can afford to lose units. At least a little bit. I can, oh, if they can find Mr. Cream out of position, that is going to be huge. And they do indeed. The undeployed Absolvers leading to death. And why not upgrade some of these resonants while you're at it? And all those units that died before did not die in vain. That being said, why should, uh, Mr. Kareem, they have gotten the fruits of their earlier expansion labor. And air units on the board. Getting an increasingly more dangerous army. As it stands, those hen is just comfortable. You know, they have they have their five rest. I mean, five rest is actually plenty for dealing with the absolvers. The problem is going to be the wardens coming in from here. That's where things are going to become concerning. That and this run by from Zoo, which is not doing anything. Solid shot, but it helped it reduced a bit of the mining time. It didn't ultimately deal much damage. In fact, more importantly, Simbi's just going for it. They didn't care. Residents find that opening to push in. You know, wardens are not free here. Of course, there are anti-air basic infantry units coming in. So, Mr. Kareem spending some pyre to try to keep this army alive. 
It's a valiant effort, but the sheer number of units they're fighting against is not going to allow those shields to last long. From here, Sand and Magical just need to slow push. They have the range. They have the unit count. They are going in just the right types. There's no counter coming here from Zoo or Mr. Kareem. Like, they don't have any Zephyrs. They don't have any significant... I mean, even Aryans wouldn't be necessarily enough. They don't have much of that either. Certainly don't have any long-range... Any kind of dislodgers. If they had... Well, they have Sharu coming up, potentially. Zoo over kind of short on tech, and if there was Hallowers coming in, that'd be the one threat. But there aren't. There's nothing for it. Dervish, the only option that Mr. Kareem thinks is worthwhile, which... Yeah, fair enough. That would help to deal with a lot of Magical's Force. But Santa's Force? Santa's Force will just laugh in the face of that and kill it. Worth noting as well, Santa and Magical continue to expand behind this. Like, they have... They know the eastern side of the map is completely free, so... Going for that is not going to be threatened. And why not go for the run by too, Magical? Just to make it that much harder for Mr. Cream to stay in the game. At this point, it is Walter team's game to lose. Sen and Magical have an economy advantage. They've slowly gained the map control. Unit tech is entirely on their side. The only weakness they have is they don't have the left side of the map. <laughs> it's, that's not a huge weakness. But I mean, they, they don't. It's it's fair. It's a very, very small weakness. Oh, they're also, yeah, they're, they're head on tech too. Yeah, this is, this really is Sen and Magical's game to lose. Zoo, going back to defense, I was wondering if they could go around for run buys with these Antari. I mean, it wouldn't be a bad idea. Most of the position, most of the units coming from multi team are very position dependent. If they're forced to move, I mean, the the resonants don't get deployed. The bone stalkers lose their hidden. A run by would actually would help Zoo and Mr. Cream to maintain some of the early advantage that they got. But they are instead going for a direct assault, and this is not going to go well. All of the spells dropped on them. Everything's weakened, turning into Kittle, and dead. The entire Team Ice Army, Watch Zone, Mr. Kareem, have lost everything. Watch Zone in particular, with no army whatsoever on the field. Mr. Kareem with a couple Dervish and a Sharu. That is not inspiring fear. Santa Claus, Magical, going for that final push. With this expansion gone, with the center gone, most of the production for the, for Team Ice has been destroyed. Most of the economy, honestly, has been destroyed. This is the only expansion that YGZO even had. Santa Claus and Magical have this game in the bag. One final push will do it. Mr. Kareem with the Sharu looking to hold the line. They don't have enough mana for an Awestrike, so those Sharu are not doing anything for them. One Awestrike has finally been found. It's not going to be enough as Sand and Magical wipe out Mr. Kareem's third. Continue to push in, and there is nothing here to stop it. While at the same time, Santa Claus decides just to continue expanding. Why not? Even if Mr. Kareem goes for this run by, goes for just scouting around and seeing what's happening, it is not going to make a difference. Sand and Magical are so far ahead in army value, they could afford to lose all of these expansions, and it simply wouldn't make a dent. Santa walking in here, all alone, too. Magical... Are they just waiting for these forces to come? I think they're just waiting for the forces to come back. Uh, they're assuming Mr. Cream is going to be sensible, move their forces back, and then ambush them with all the Bone Stalkers. Doesn't even matter, though. Santa Claus has enough firepower to wipe out the Naturals completely. The main bases are going to be a small concern to move up to, just going up the ramps. At the same time, Mr. Kareem going for the base trade. Brave move from Mr. Kareem. They minimal firepower to come in here, take this out. But they're going for it. Magical at the same time decides, well, hey, Santa Claus taking care of this, no problem. I can just move back and deal with the rest of it. Santa Claus taking care of the base. Magical wiping out the front assault force from Mr. Kareem. And now Mr. Kareem. No army left. Nothing to defend. Thrones were on the way for soup, but no time to build those. And there is nothing working here. 
all the casters from Team Fire just letting no, just giving no quarter to any of Mr. Cream's units trying to reinforce. And this, this is merciless. This is game. Walter team takes game one off of a solid defense from a proxy. And that's, that's the thing to bear in mind here. That, that entire match was determined by a proxy that sort of worked and then very quickly stopped working. And I mean, very, like, that was... Like, that was... There was a whole lot of time where just it fell apart. Like, it fell apart really fast. Though I do agree that... Or, I did mention then, Chad is pointing out as well, that Hallowers would have made a huge difference for Team Ice. Like that the thing is, that's the counter. Hallowers have the range to deal with the resonance, so you throw those out there, and there's not a whole lot that Santa Magical could do other than switch into air. I'm curious what the plan is from Zoo and Mr. Kareem. Because the proxy was an option that you go for oftentimes in a situation like this. It's a known skill differential. You know that you need to have something, a trick up your sleeve of some kind, in order to deal with whatever it is that your opponent is throwing at you. Like, this is not atypical. It's just that it's also kind of it's kind of hard to make work. Like, you don't just go with... You throw in the proxy. Like, you have to have more than that. You have to have... like, Because your contain means that your opponent can't actually go out through the main path. They can still do run-bys, but you could also still do run-bys to maintain a contain on all sides. With... The way that it was being handled, it, the, clearly the idea was hold the center and then push from there. But it was the it was the lack of time. Like they just couldn't make it work for the time, and that's where they died. Like ultimately, the Walter team had the time to build up resonance to push in, and the contain was not able to push and deal any damage. It couldn't go up the ramp as it was trying to do, and it also wasn't doing any effective run buys in the natural expansion. But, well, play and learn, so we'll see what they adapt to in game two. Zoo appearing. Yep, yeah, uh, Zoo once again going for the proxy. They want to try it one more time. It wasn't a bad move, strictly speaking. Santa preemptively going for early tech. If they're not going for. Whether they're going for expansion or not, they're certainly prepared for the possibility of having to go for early Hallowers. Like, they know this is a likely. Po oh, they know. They know. Okay, they are double. Zoo and Mr. Cream are doubling down on this. Both of them going for proxies here. It is known. It is spotted. Santa was preemptively prepared to go fast tech to get to get get resonance as quickly as possible to deal with the absolvers coming in. Like Zoo and Kareem, I you know commend them for trying. This is just harder to pull off when your opponent has seen it already. They know it's coming, and Santa clearly already does. When that's a known quantity, your opponent isn't going to just let you get away with it. Ironically, if Zoo and Mr. Cream had played a bit more of a standard 
open with an expansion didn't go for this proxy, they would have had a bit of an easier time because Santa Claus is going for such early aggression, going for early tech. They are not going to be as ahead economically, or at least as ahead as they would have been if they both double expand. If they both had done the early expansion, which would have been an opening for Zoo and Kareem, but now with Zoo and Kareem playing right into Santa's hands, this is a desperate position for them. It's possible, technically, if there's good micro and solid use of power abilities, especially if they're if Zoo and Mr. Cream do tech into Hallowers, at least they'll have that as a mid-game, mid to late game option to deal with Santa's resonance. But the timing does not work for Zoo and Kareem. Like this is meant to exploit a gap in your opponent's timing, assuming they go for a fast expansion. And they have not done so. The only weakness right now is that Santa has not been... Okay, there. I think it's like, Santa, you do want to go for the resonance, right? Like, you're... That is... Is that the goal? Is that not the goal? Have I been mistaken? It's typically the goal. That is not the goal, in fact. The parent... No, it seems that Santa Claus has decided no. Resonance are, in fact, not the goal. The goal is going for... Judging by the tech, early Dread Sisters. Also a good choice. In either case, it will break up this army, though the timing is the problem. Despite preparations, Team Ice is still able to get a solid position on timing. Undergrounds, however, are online, but also in a terrible position to work with. Zoo and Mr. Kareem stepping right on top of them, stopping any use of the Hunting Grounds ambush damage. Just, oh no, Bloodbound. Of course it's Bloodbound. Santa would go for that. Sniping out the Absolvers directly. They, I mean, they've got to do that now. There is no time whatsoever. Zoo and, Zoo and Mr. Kareem have already locked down Magical's economy. Santa can't break into this. Then this actually might turn around for Zoo and Kareem. One Blood... Oh. One Absolver down for two Bloodbound is not a solid trade. Like, having both players here for Team Ice has significantly improved their chances of breaking through this. I mean, this could be their game as a result. Magical looking to find some flank to work with here. Santa's all looking to go in, but the Absolvers are simply too numerous. There's no way to get in here. Not without losing all the units in the process. Santa also does not have the pyre to set up any red harvest, anything to at least compensate for the losses. These losses are done. The the center god heart is gone for magical. They're relying entirely on the natural expansion for any kind of economy. Bastion under attack as well. Magical desperate to defend that. At least have some ally to work with. But even that's not going to be enough. Santa Claus fighting a 1v2 now with late... Amber Womb Tech, no resonance on the way. Ikor's potentially, but that's not going to be enough to deal with the Absolvers in the base. Zoo and, Zoo and Mr. Kareem, they've made this work. They've absolutely made... Oh, yeah, sorry, this is best of five, should point out. This is, in fact, best of five. But yeah, this, is, this has been made to work. Which, I've got to say, I commend. Like, that was... Very well played by Zoo and Kareem. They've... I mean, they, the fact that they doubled down on it is what gave them the speed to build this up in time to just run roughshod over San and Magical's bases. Santa going for one last desperate attempt, but it's not going to be enough. This, this is over. Zoo and Kareem have managed to take game two off of the off of learning from the failures from last time. Don't go halfway when going for this kind of early push. You have to commit. Even with the bloodbound in the back lines, like Zoo and Kareem do not care. They really don't. They will win a base race. Neither Santa nor Magical have the alloy to build another Grove Heart. If the natural expansion gets taken out, that is game. Rather surprisingly, we aren't seeing Magical... Or sorry, we aren't seeing Zoo or Mr. Kareem actually go down on the expansion to figure out whether or not it's there. It might. I mean, it might be. And it's a thing to check out for, but it's taking a little while to get there, and that does give a little bit more time for a potential turnaround here. And the Bloodbound, not the only huge amount of damage. 
not likely to take this out. Oh man, Zoo and Mr. Cream could have won by now. Unfortunately, they just letting those resonance get built up, letting the army get rebuilt. It's not okay, Magical doesn't have the resources to build anything. Sorry, Santa doesn't. Magical does. Magical does in fact have alloy coming in. Santa's broke. Like, Santa is truly broke. Magical at least is in a position now that they could start building expansions. They do have a symbiote in position to build an expansion. Wait, why are they... What are you doing? Is... Are... Santa Claus and Magical are going to snatch, snatch Victor from the Jaws and defeat Sindley off of the back of making their opponents confused? used enough about their expansion to not lose it? It appears so. It would appear that this is just a, a complete turn. Okay, there, there it is. I'm thinking, what this, this can't be right. There isn't going to be just a win off of that, but well, no, no, the Absolver's here. No, there's an Absolver here. It's not, it's not that simple. This is absolutely Zoo and, and Mr. Kareem's game to lose. They've just been not winning it. Just very bizarre. I mean, Santa Claus is almost ready to... Yeah, they're ready. They could get an expansion. They are getting the corner expansion. Santa Claus and Magical have now gained a foothold back in this game. Santa, with the expansion in the Northeast, could set themselves up they could move forward with it. Like, they could actually get this back in. Magical as well, rebuilding their main base. And while there isn't a whole lot of damage being dealt, Magical and Santa Claus distracting Zoo and Mr. Cream enough that there just doesn't have to be. Like, it's the mental. They've completely broken the mental state for Team Ice. My like, Team Ice is trying to figure out what is going on. Like, really what's going on is they they were winning. They almost won. They were one base away from taking it out. And then they left. I don't know if they were expecting there to be side expansions. I mean, that's where you start sending, like, one unit around or scout around to just double check. Or if they were expecting that there was... I don't know what else they're expecting. Like, they killed both mains. Maybe they didn't expect an expansion at all. In either case, we're back to, you know, one base for, well, just about back to one base for Santa and two bases for Magical. The Bastions were, are back online, hence why Santa Claus was able to recover. However, the Magical expansion is getting taken out. Zoom, Mr. Cream have the opening now to take the game. Like, this is, this is their chance to get back in this. And actually win. Like, Magical and Santa Claus have been doing a great job of distracting their opponent, but it's not going to be enough without the actual firepower to back it up and the money to rebuild it. So this is... This should be it. Zoo and Mr. McCream going to take out all of Magical's expansions. They don't know about Santa's corner expansion, which is the thing that they didn't have to deal with last time. So they could have easily won last time, and this time... Santa Claus could be giving them the runaround for a few minutes to come. Now, typically speaking, this kind of scenario does not end well for the person trying to be tricksy. But, if they're not gonna, if they don't kill us off, okay, never mind. Magical's throwing the towel. There it is. There's the, there's the GG. Because that would have been like, there's a point where it's like, okay, look, you've lost. Like, just, just, just move on to game three. Go for it. Like, don't, don't, don't waste time anymore. All right. Okay, well. We may get a change of map, as it is the loser's choice. And it is going to be Fool's Bay, which is no surprise whatsoever to me. 
My only surprise is that it wasn't referred to as Walter's Bay when Santa asked for it. Because that is how Santa do. A fool's Bay? See what happens. I mean, considering the structure of the map, it's... It's still pretty possible for Zoo and Mr. Kareem to set up their proxies. Part of me wonders if Santa and Magic are just gonna go, No, 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 you wanna see a Karath proxy build? We'll show you a Karath proxy build! Oh boy, will we! I, I think that's what they're thinking. Because, I mean, yeah, the, the, they are the people, they made, they invented the Karath proxy build. But looks like now we're going to be, we're going to be going to, again, Malin Zol. Same immortal selections as we had so far. So being a best of five, it's still going to be another couple games. See what Magical and Santa Claus can come up with in the time. Like, it's been made clear that it is possible for Zoo and Mr. Cream to win. Like, it is possible, at least through well-applied cheese, that they can win. But, it's also been shown that Sam and Magical can defend it if it's not perfectly executed. So, that is the that is the dynamic we're working with right now. Is what are Zoo and Mr. Kareem's cheese plans, if any, presumably, on Fool's Bay? Like, usually you see, right here in the center, you'll see a Legion Hall built up. That's typically what happens. Indeed, we once again have Zoo popping out with the early moat. Now, does Mr. Cream go for their own? They do. That was the key winning factor last time. Was the fact that both of them came in to help with the proxy. Both of them had like, applied that extra firepower as opposed to the first game where Mr. Cream was trying to play the mid game, was trying to be playing safe ish. Didn't really get a whole lot out of it. This time, though, double proxy. And it is not going to be spotted immediately. I mean, the fact that there's no expansion, the fact that there's only one Ether Extractor, it's likely enough of a hint. Santa Claus and Magical are expecting this. The question, as you can see already, the Magical scouting pattern. Magical knows it's going to be somewhere. They just don't know where. Like, they know that it's going to happen. They just don't know where they need to look for it. Now, we already see Santa, once again, going for that early, early Ether, early units. Both going for early units. Both of them well aware Team Ice wants to cheese. That's how they're going to play this game. Every time. I am curious if Santa's going to go for early Resonant. I do think that was the mistake on defense for Santa the last game was that they didn't go for immediate Resonant and just win with that. Because Resonant's counter Absolvers and Absolvers are the main problem to deal with that Santa and Magical have to deal with coming from Azu and Mr. Kareem. Azu and Mr. Kareem can keep their resolvers alive. Santa and Magical just cannot push in with anything but resonance. But hey, it was worth a try to see if it can make it work without that. Just because why not? You know? Maybe. Maybe it's a way to make it work. Like, just go in fast with the early Bone Stalkers, early Masked Hunters, and maybe that'll work, says San and Magical last game. This time around. Okay, Santa going for an air approach. Also a solid counter. Nothing here shoots up. So going heavy on Thrums will also deal with everything being thrown out. Simultaneously, Magical looking to find... Rama opportunities? Looking to find... Certainly looking to find Pyre. If nothing else, that's going to be of some use. 
If Magical can summon Zul, they will be able to get rid of basically... Yeah, help use that to help get rid of all of the basic infantry units coming out from Zoo and Mr. Kareem. If they don't summon Zul, then... I mean, the power can still be used for other stuff. It could be used for towers. It could be used for setting up ambush circles. It might want to be used pretty quickly, though. The Absolvers will take out this first tower. Santa Claus forced to retreat. They do have a few thrums built up so far. But only a few. Are they going to play the hand early? This is dangerous. They play their hand too early. They're going to get hit by anti-air units. Yes, Zoo and Mr. Cream don't have a whole lot of expansion or tech or whatever going on, but they will. They have the resources to get it. Now, one Reliquary is going to be all they need, and there it is. Anti-air units are on the way, not to mention the towers. Those do deal with thrums. On the other hand, thrums deal with all the backline expansion stuff, so, you know, they could just stop everything from being built in the first place. So Santa, Santa gambling on the ability is just... Actually, both Santa and Magical gambling on the ability to take out their opponent's bases. Essentially win the base race before it starts. And they force Zoo and Mr. Cream's hand to go into the natural expansions on the team fire side. Now, they don't anti-air here, so Mr. Cream... Or sorry, so Santa Claus will be able to start wiping out these this army gradually. And gradually being the operative word, as Santa's natural expansion has been taken out, their main base is heavily threatened as well. Resonance coming in from Magical will help defend this. Whether it saves the day is going to come down to their positioning and control. So far, not good. Base trade attempt coming in the main base is at least of some use. There are no other expansions for Zoo or Mr. Kareem. These Bone Stalkers will be able to pull around the side... The question, of course, is will that happen in time? This is, again, a base race. Who kills faster? Who kills first? Magical trying to play it safe. Get rid of all the all of the moats before they go. Here's Magical's assuming. They are assuming that Mr. Cre uh, either Zoo or Mr. Cream has an expansion. Doesn't want to just go to kill because if they if they get it wrong. Then there's going to be a hidden expansion somewhere on the map, and then trying to root that out is going to be an absolute nightmare. And indeed, that is a concern. Zoo does get one immediately, right in the most well-defended area of the map. Same time, Santa's expansion is being wiped out. Ze Zephyrs are on the field. I think Santa Rich. Ooh. I was focusing a little bit too much on the main base. I'm not entirely sure where the other army went, but it looks like they just got wiped out by Resonance. Mr. Cream and Zoo. Why just Zoo losing all their Resonance? Without the Resonance, there's nothing to meaningfully defend this expansion. That gets spotted. It's done. In fact, even if that doesn't get spotted, it's right in the most notable area of the map for <laughs> Team Ice's forces. Like, it's gonna just get attacked anyway. In fact, are, did they see it? Did they see it? Oh, it's so close! The thrums are so close! They almost see it! Just need to move a little bit to the right, and then they will have that knowledge. Of course, at the same time, the base race is absolutely... It's over. Like, there's... The attempt was stopped by Magical's Resonance. Santa's thrums... Able to just completely counter counteract that approach. Is that gonna be That's gonna be spotted. Okay. There it is. It gets spotted. It is known. It is doomed. Yeah, there's the blood one thing. The residents don't have enough range for that root way. They can't like magical cannot attack that base from that position without the blood well. So, Mr. Okay. There is one more option. Like, Zoo could rebuild one more expansion before they go broke. They are. They are not doing so. I don't have any moats around the map. This is. This is dangerous. This is pretty devastating. 
Mr. Cream is rebuilding, however. Right as Zoo loses their only expansion, Mr. Cream goes for the rebuild. Zoo goes for the assault, assault, but up the ramp is not the way to go, even with the Pillar of the Heavens. Just a force multiplier doesn't do much good when there's not a lot of force to multiply, and there is no force to multiply here as Zoo loses their army. Golden Tigger having no army to speak of. And Santa and Magical spotting the expansion. That is game three. Walter team back on form. And Mr. Cream and Wajazoo are going to have to find another way into this series. So their cheese tactics simply are not working that well. And also Bacon Hero, yes, the Immortals are actually crabs now. As with all things. Remember Carcinization. All becomes crab. Game 4 is going to be on a map of Wajizo and Mr. Kareem's choosing. Which I half expect is going to be a retread of this. To see if they can try to pull off that cheese traffic again. On the other hand, they did win on Lost Province. I mean, they won once on Lost Province. But hey, 50-50 is better than 0-1. Make sure they know who I'm talking to here. Okay. Lost Province it is. All right, so while I typically like to have people watch on YouTube because channel views are nice, if Zoo and Mr. Kareem, I really recommend right now is for watch Zoo and Mr. Kareem to after this is over, go and check the Twitch chat because there is a lot of really good advice on Twitch chat right now, which I'm sorry, people who are watching on YouTube are not going to be able to see this. But I will point out that Tukatai has been sending a lot of good advice, particularly p pointing out how castigators in this game, like in this game, they mentioned some stuff last game, but this game as well, pointing out the castigators, one with the army, one at home, would have completely shut down the Thrum offensive. And that would have been easy. Like a castigator is something you can get off of a soul foundry without tech. So they could have absolutely done that. There, there was no reason not to. And that is, I mean, that's the thing you learn, but that's what I'm saying. Like, Mr. Kareem and Wajizu should go check the VOD, and in particular check the Twitch VOD, because that has stuff in the chat to tell them, this is what you could have done in this situation. Because this game is full of these situations. It's like, oh, you could have done this, you could have done that. It's, there's a lot of knowledge checks that's, eh, especially when you're getting new, learn, used to the game. There's knowledge checks like that. Having one or two anti-air units Castigators in particular is an effective way of keeping yourself from being harassed, effective way of keeping your largely ground force or your ground force incapable of shooting up, allowing one of the units to shoot up. So yeah. Go check that Twitch chat. It'll be in the it'll be in the VOD replay. It should be in the highlight. Should be in the highlight. I'm pretty sure you get stored in the highlight. If not, you've got two weeks from the point that I say this. So you have until October 22nd. I will highlight it. I think the highlight has chat. But the base thing, October 22nd. It'll be expired by then. Like it'll, that's, a lot, that's how long it'll last. As it stands, going into the potentially last game, Sand and Magical, Double Lorism. I'm, I am sensing a. I am, I'm saying it. I'm sensing they're gonna just go. You know what? You want cheese? Here's cheese. <laughs> you want? 
This this really is this giving me those vibes. Like We'll show you how you do cheese. This this is how you like watch and learn from the masters. Watch and learn from the people who invented cheese in Immortal. I mean seriously, they pretty much did. Not too much of an exaggeration, they they kinda did. No surprises here. Zoo, once again, as they have in every single previous match. Oh, wait a sec. Are they... We have a surprise! No, never mind. We don't have surprises. I was like, are they going for the expansion? No, they're not going for the expansion. They are. They are just trying to move out in a way that makes it less likely for them to be scouted. Okay, that's, that's good. Oh, they are going. Oh, no, never mind. Okay, double bluffing. Going for the early expansion, but in their. In the nine o'clock, completely out of the way, with Mr. Cream going for the semi forward. This is a safe forward. This is not proxy. This this close to the base, going for that semi forward Legion Hall, which provides a little bit of plausible deniability. I mean, so far it's been three for three on early proxy from Zoo and Mr. Kareem. Santa and Magical not going for cheese though. They are going for pretty. They're going straight build. This is still macro game on their end. Of course, if Zoo's expansion gets spotted, it's dead. There is no saving that. It's too far away to save. The whole point of the expansion here is that it doesn't get spotted. It's so off the beaten path, your opponent doesn't even try to go for it. Doesn't even think to go for it this early in the game. That may not be something Zoo and Mr. Kareem actually get away with here. Sand and Magical definitely are looking for the proxy, though. Like, they want, they know something is up. And this is where I see there being a potential problem. Magical Scout going all around the Southwest expansions. They'll find the 9 o'clock. They already have found the 9 o'clock, in fact. The, every, the plans have been laid bare. Santa Claus and Magical know exactly what Zoo and Mr. Cream are up to this game. There's not a whole lot that can stop any assault on this expansion. Thus, there's not a whole lot to actually preserve the economy. Zoo and Cream are looking like they might want to rethink some of their strategy right now. I mean, they're not getting attacked yet, so it's a, it's a thought. In any event... Sand and Magical are a little bit farther away from there. Like, they're, they're getting... It's actually going quite a ways. I think really giving Zoo and Mr. Cream the defender's advantage here. Magical hasn't even gone all that aggressive. Magical far more focused on maintaining map control, maintaining solid presence on knowledge more than on any kind of actual military. So San has been running the show as far as military presence is concerned. Which means Zoo and, Zoo and Kareem do have an advantage simply by numbers, as they are both focusing on military, and they they have a small timing window, which is like literally right now, to go in and do some damage. Actually, the time I would have might have passed Magical having teched up a bit faster. Already in position to just defend against anything that Zoo and Mr. Kareem throw out here. The key thing from here going forward is going to be tech. Mr. Cream has already started setting up four Wardens, which will be a solid choice. However, that's answered by San and Magical both going for their own Angelarium. Or, own Angelaria, and that means they could just get Sentinel to deal with it, or just get Scepters to win on the Destroy the Ground game. Scepters do deal a lot more damage than Wardens. I mean, if things are staying put, but in Karath Mirrors, yeah, things are going to stay put. It's a salt. It's... Karath Mirror, so already forces that aren't super fast or mobile. And you're dealing largely with Absolver-based armies, which are going to be sit in place. Scepter's going to have a field day. Like, Sand and Magical, they have the exact right setup here. Ooh, 
Really, to them, it's just a matter of choosing the time. Which they ought to do carefully, as Zoo does see a weakness. They do smell blood in the do smell blood in the water, and will have this tower taking the tower foundation for themselves. Tables are turning a little bit, but we have seen Sand and Magical defend from this position no problem before. Tower, this separation they've gotten going is risky. Zoo looking to bait in, but Magical... Magical goes for it safely. Santa does not fall for the bait. In fact, Santa using it to double bluff, baiting back. Like, baiting Mr. Cream to move their army out of position from the ramp in order to provide an opening for Santa to start attacking it. Fortunately, it is not going to go so well. They don't really have the forces to actually stop this. They do have the forces to make any attempt to go down the hill be regrettable immediately. And that's not going to matter for Zoo and Mr. Kareem. They are, they've got the shields. They're pushing in. Even with... I mean, the scepters are helping out. At least on defense. Santa... Even pulling down the hill was still a bit of a success. Getting rid of a couple of solvers. Getting, losing a bunch of the army in the meantime, however. That is a problem. The scepters are currently the only real defense that Santa Claus has. Ultimately, though, Sand and Magical do barely win out in terms of army value. More importantly, they win out in terms of distracting their opponent as they expand. Like Magical getting another base. Sand able to make sure their natural is fully secured. And at the same time, that Dervish is wiping out one of Zeus' bases. The moat line was not mining for basically that entire fight. So for all the good that they did by wiping out Magical and Santa's ground army, they ultimately did not do a whole lot of damage in terms of the overall game. Um, Magical? Okay. Magical and Santa setting up okay, the Magi here, the healing. So just that little extra bit of sustain to account for the fact that they lost their entire army. Like, Zoo and Mr. Cream do have an army size advantage. Getting... Getting in the field healing will help compensate for that for Sand and Magical. Kind of surprised we haven't actually seen any of that coming out from Mr. Kr from Zoo, to be honest. Mr. Cream makes a bit more sense. Ajari's in the field healing is more situational. But for Orzum, it's just straight up, you have a unit that heals anything nearby. And gives you hollow grounds. It gives you this entire range. Like it's just it's just good stuff. It's actually, in fact, I'm surprised they haven't gone for anything to do with that since hey, there's a scepter inside your base, wiping out your forces. Zoo finally coming back to deal with it. But Santa's damage is done. I mean they've they shut down mining for a full minute. Trying to bait on an attack. Certainly messing up. Zoo and Mr. Kareem positioning. That is the entire game plan here. If Zoo and Mr. Kareem move, Sand and Magical win. And Sand and Magical are consistently pushing and prodding, trying to find a way to prompt Zoo and Mr. Kareem to either think they can go to the fight or think they have to. With the Castigator does mean one of the ways to make them think they have to fight is shut down. That being said, checking the base count, it is two bases each for Team Ice compared to roughly three bases each for Team Fire. All Team... All Santa and Mr... All Santa and Magical need to do is wait. They're set up, they have a tech advantage, they have a significant advantage when it comes to air presence. The scepters being the or the sentinels being the only real threat here, and they're not a threat to walk in. Like if they're moving into a fight, which again, Santa and Magical want Zoo and Mr. Cream to approach. If Zoo and Mr. Cream approach, those sentinels are dead. Like the only real, th real threat here is I guess this Castigator, which is... Nah, it's fine. But again, it doesn't matter. Like, 
Santa and Magical using this distraction to expand all over. Mr. Cream cluing in and moving for the same, but they just haven't been doing it as much. Or as frequently. Zoo and Mr. Cream quite a ways ahead on the stored alloy. But building that up is not an issue. It's just they haven't done it. An advantage which Santa and Magical are more than happy to, to take. Magical is definitely in a better position to start attacking. That being said, Mr. Kareem decides, hey, wait a sec. Maybe my opponent's expanding around the side of the map. Oh, hey, they are. How about that? Maybe we should deal with that. Which is the position they wanted. Like I said, Zoo now prompted to move in a little bit here. Santa with Scepters does not have to care about anything besides. They did lose the expansion, but they take its entire force in the meantime. They won't be able to do before the Deliver from Evil does its job. But even then, that that broke the lines. Magical can use that as an opportunity to crack this crack this position wide open. Hallowers right there start dealing with it. Any advances from Zoo to try to break the Hallowers are going to be met with Absolver Resistance and thus destroyed. And Santa Claus looking to flank. Walking the late game here with Team Ice behind in military, behind in effectively economic value, certainly behind in production. That's the biggest problem here. They just don't have the supply count to actually build anything with. While the Walter team is pretty happy just to set up their army, I mean, if they have to, max supply, and then push in. In fact, not even to worry, as... The towers are done. There is nothing here. Oh, wow. There is nothing here. The bait was... The trap was set. The bait was... But it was bitten. Zoo and Mr. Kareem fall into the army exactly as San and Magical wanted. Despite that, Mr. Kareem is trying to help out with, with the use of Heaven's Aegis. It's simply not enough against the overwhelming firepower they're walking into. Zoo and Mr. Kareem... They needed to retreat a long time ago, and they have not. Losing everything in the meantime. Santa and Magical's tech advantage is coming to the fore. While their ground army has been heavily damaged, their air army is unstoppable. One more tower remains. Without that, nothing stops this hill from being taken. It is gone. The hill falls. Zoo and Mr. Kareem lose control of the center of the map. From here, there is nothing stopping San and Magical from just destroying everything along this western side of the map. And then from there, taking the game. Is there anything in the main base to try to help out? Some Sentinels, which will be some use against the Thrones, distracted by the Scepter, giving <laughs> Sentinels that much more room to maneuver. Other than that, there's not a whole lot. Extra Angelaria have been built up by Zoo, just desperate to get some kind of supply going. Mr. Cream, on the other hand, getting alloy blocked. Pretty badly, too, in fact, surprisingly. Oh, they never upgraded their bases. Yeah, you gotta do that. It's, that's kind of necessary to actually get the resources to build up anything. Unfortunately for Mr. Cream, they're kind of broke at the moment. It's basically why Zoo with a token army from Kareem to hold the line, and that is... Well, that's a token army. It's not really going to do all that much good in practice. As Sand and Magical push in, taking out the Sentinel. Sentinel is the one thing that exists that Zoo could potentially use here. They are going down one at a time. Thrones are falling, but not fast enough as Zoo loses all of their Sentinels. The Thrones, complete free reign. There is nothing to stop Sand and Magical from wiping out the expansion here. There's nothing to stop them from wiping out everything Zoo and Mr. Kareem have built up. All the anti-air force is gone. Desperate Empire and Broken to save the Acropolis. That will buy some time, but the moment that goes away, the Acropolis is done. Third is gone. The Naturals have only just been built up. Magical and Santa can roam around the map at liberty. 
First, though, get rid of production structures. Mr. Cream has already been supply blocked most of this game. Might as well keep them that way. And now, the expansion walk. Magical, looking to clean up the western side of the map. Santa. Just wanted to make sure that a little bit of cont extra contain pressure is applied before going to help them out. Mr. Kareem and Zoo. I gotta say, I don't really agree with not having expanded in the natural. Like, I get I get the side expansion. That did, that did do a lot of good. Like, I'm not gonna lie. That actually worked out really well. I'm just surprised the natural expansion was taken so late. Especially for Mr. Kareem. They could have used it. As it stands, it's too late. Like, most of the map has been taken by Santa and Magical. And while Zoo is going for a run by, it's not gonna be enough. Mr. Kareem decides it's over. Zoo wants to keep going. They didn't find something, but there is nothing to be found as the Walter team with a 3-1 lead takes the October 2v2 show match. And that is that. So congratulations to Magical and Santa. Although considering the skill of the players, congratulations for Zoo and Mr. Cream for taking a game off them. I mean, not to be flippant, but taking a game off Sand and Magical is a is a feat. That was that was worth something. So you still managed to get a game. But again, go check the Twitch chat. There's some debate about some of the options, like some back and forth on you know whether or not certain options would work. But there's a lot of good discussion there from Tukatai and Lightforge. Oh, Tukatai, Lightforge, or Fox and Mayhem primarily that go in a lot of different directions about thinking about what could be done. See, so yeah, I go check that for Zoo and Mr. Cream specifically. Although if you're curious from what they were doing, what they could have done differently, I went over some of it, but the chat has even more stuff that they were thinking about as well. However, that is going to be it. That was it for today. So as always, if you want to join the tournaments, the Discord is linked in the chat or in the description. If you're watching on YouTube. And if you are... So if you want to play... I mean, the, if you're watching on YouTube, there are keys in the chat. Sorry, the keys in the description. If you're watching on Twitch, there are some raffles. But yeah, don't forget the Discord. If you are in the game, that helps. And then just join the tournament from there. There's a tournaments channel. Every week, there's a Break the Game tournament. And... There have there's been one Alpha Trials as well as a bigger month the meant to be monthly event. We're still waiting on we're not sure what's gonna happen with that, but the weeklies are ongoing. No matter what. So weekly tournaments every Saturday at 9 a.m. Pacific time. Be by GMT standards about four in the afternoon. At least for the next few weeks. Actually, it might not be anymore. I'm not quite sure when British summertime ends. Regardless, yeah, Discord, it's, everything's up there. So, yeah, double check that. Otherwise, that is going to be it. So, thank you to Z Zoo, Mr. Cream, Santa, and Magical for joining today to play out a match for the purposes of entertaining people. And thank you to Seamus for organizing the tournament, despite it not having a lot of participants. And, of course, thank you all of you for watching, and have a good night, everyone.